Yo, what up? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is don't read the manual. That's right. Reading sucks as a simmer with limited time and maybe even ADD. You want to jump in and you want to fly and get involved right away. And hopefully this video can help you do that. The topic of today is autopilot. If you've ever wondered how the autopilot works in the F-16 and most flight sims, BMS and DCS included, you're in the right spot. Stick around and I'll show you how to work the autopilot. Okay, welcome to the office. If you don't know where the autopilot is in the Viper, it's on the left-hand side, right above the gear handle for the most part, and right below the master arm switch. So if we remove our pilot, you can see the gear handles right here, the master arm switch is right here, and the autopilot exists right here. Now, there are two switches that control the autopilot. There's one that is responsible for the role of the aircraft, and the other that is responsible for the pitch of the aircraft. These two switches work together and we get autopilot as a result. Oh, that's fine and dandy. Let's see how they actually work. Right now, both of my switches, the roll switch and the pitch switch are in the center position. You'll notice on the pitch side, the R says autopilot off. I can maneuver the aircraft, the flight path marker, which is this little guy right here, will kind of go all over the place as I steer the aircraft. No kidding, right? Easy peasy. We'll start with the pitch switch, and the first thing we're going to look at is altitude hold. Right now, we're at 16,980 feet. We're going to go ahead and engage the altitude hold by moving the pitch switch to the altitude hold position. And now the jet will do everything in its power to keep us at 16,980 feet. If I move the stick down and we lose a little bit of altitude, when I let go of the stick, the jet will pitch itself up until it gets back to 16,980-ish Feet. It's going to do its best and it's going to try to set us right back down where we wanted it to be. Now, here is a small trick. There is a button called the paddle switch, which you can bind to your HOTAS. And this will actually allow you to change the altitude that you've given the jet. So to do that, you hold the paddle switch that you bound and you can change the pitch. So you fly down to whatever altitude you want to fly at. We're going to go down 16,000-ish and you're just going to kind of hold it there. Uh, we'll come up just a tad. And you let go. And now the jet, just like cruise control and changing the speed of your car, will do its best to hold 16,000 feet. So if I pitch up and think that I want to climb back up, the moment I let go of the stick, guess what happens? The jet is going to pitch itself down and it's going to recenter right around 16,000 feet for us because we used that paddle switch to change the altitude. If I want to do that again without disengaging the altitude, I can hold the paddle switch. I can find a new altitude to be at. The moment I find that altitude, I can release the paddle switch and the jet will correct itself. Now, I released the paddle switch way earlier than this, so we've continued to lose altitude, which means the jet is actually going to pitch itself back up until it can get back to the altitude that I released the paddle switch at. Now, the other way you can do this is you can actually come over here and you can disable that altitude switch by moving it back to the middle position, find the new altitude you want to be at, And then, as you might guess, re-enable the altitude switch. That is the other way to do it. It is a little bit more convenient for longer flights if you have the paddle switch bound because you can very easily change altitude. All right, the next switch we're going to look at, again, is the pitch switch, but we're going to look at the attitude hold. And the attitude hold will hold the pitch of the jet based on the attitude that we put it in. It's kind of hard to demonstrate, but... I think I have a way. So bear with me. So right now, if I take the jet and we're flying, we were flying until I was messing with it. We're flying pretty level at the moment. I am going to roll the jet to the right with the autopilot off and I'm going to let go of the stick. And you can see that the flight path marker is dropping, right? We're negative five degrees and we're on our way to negative 10. This is just aerodynamics and how they work when we roll the jet. So let me go back up to level and we're going to enable the attitude switch now this doesn't solve all of it 
But what the jet will try to do is it will try to maintain the pitch that it was at. So not necessarily the altitude, but the pitch, whether it's five degrees of pitch up or negative five degrees of pitch down, it has a range that it works within and it will try to hold that pitch given the flight conditions that it's experiencing. So we have attitude hold on now. Now what happened? Watch what happens. I'm gonna roll the jet. I'm going to let go of the stick and the flight path marker still drops, but not nearly as much or not nearly as aggressively when I didn't have the attitude hold switch enabled. I'm still not touching the stick and we're just kind of dealing with natural aerodynamics. If I kind of maneuver that flight path marker back up to the horizon with the autopilot on, the jet will actually do a much better job than me at keeping that near the horizon. Now it's not perfect. It still has to deal with you know, the way flight works. I'm going to stay in this role right now, and I'm actually going to disable the attitude switch so that you can see the effect that it actually has on the jet. We're going to go ahead and disable it and watch the flight path marker. It's immediately going to start dropping. The pitch switch is great, and it definitely allows us to do simple things, but it works better if we combine it with the roll switch on the left hand side by default it's kind of always enabled right now it's in the center position which is attitude hold which means that as we roll the jet around it kind of just flies how we want it to fly i can roll the jet i can let go of the stick and the jet is not correcting itself it is holding this attitude on the roll when i let go of the stick so wherever i put the jet it's going to stop and stay that's great if we're in a holding pattern or something like that, which we often are in a game like BMS, but it's not so great if we want to follow a specific heading or a specific flight path. So we're going to start with the steering select, which is actually the switch in the down position. We can see that we're heading to steer point two on the DED here, and we can also see it down here on the HSD. There's a white solid dot instead of these hollow dots that exist on our flight path. And that's the currently selected steer point. But our jet, as you can see, is not flying towards that steer point. So one of the things that we can do is we can enable the steering select and the jet will navigate to the steer point that we select. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on steering select and you'll notice nothing happens. That's because the pitch switch is in the autopilot off position. This has no impact on the way the jet is currently flying. I can go ahead and hit heading select as well and nothing changes because the autopilot is off so we're going to go back to steering select and now i want to get there at this altitude so i'm just going to be lazy and i'm going to kick on the altitude hold and immediately the jet turns and it's going to turn to steer us towards steer point two once it gets into the right heading for steer point two i am not touching the stick the jet will roll itself out and continue to follow the steer point if I change the steer point at any given time, the jet will reorient itself to fly towards that steer point. So now we are navigating towards that steer point at 7,940 feet because we simply have the altitude hold on as well as steering select. One thing to note with the autopilot is that it does not care about your flight path. So you might have a specific path that you want to take between two steer points the autopilot doesn't know that that path exists it just knows where in space the steer point is compared to you and it will take you there so now we're heading to steer point two if i change the steer point by using this rocker on the icp boom you can see that we're now navigating to steer point three and this dot has become white and the jet has turned itself i'm not giving the jet any inputs and it's holding this altitude it's making a very beautiful and perfect turn the next mode for the roll switch can be a little bit tricky because it relies on an instrument that you don't spend a lot of time looking at most of the time and it is the heading select switch. Down here, there's actually two knobs. There's one here on the left, right under where it says heading, and there's one on the right, right under where it says course. And there's a tiny little hard to see yellow marker right here. That is the heading that we have dialed in to our instruments for the jet. So if I grab this heading 
wheel and I start to spin it, I actually move that yellow marker around. So this is helpful. Like, let's say I want to steer on a heading of 150. I can move this right here over 15. And now the heading bug is set to 150. So if I come back to the autopilot and I take it out of steering select and I put it into heading select, the jet is going to turn and we will be able to see the tape right here, the compass, when it gets to 150, the jet is going to continue to fly that heading of 150 the entire time. And as you can see, we level out at 150. I can change the steer points as much as I want. I can come here. We can go to any steer point and it doesn't matter. The jet doesn't care. It is in heading select mode. If I want to change the heading that the jet is on, I can come down here to the heading knob and I can say, hey, you are actually going to fly at heading 03-ish. We'll get it as close as we can. And you'll see the jet is going to fly in that direction. Now. You might be saying, why am I using altitude mode and not attitude mode? Simply because I find it to be the easiest one to use because I want to stay at this altitude. The jet will continue to steer itself in attitude mode as well. But now I need to manage the altitude. And to me, that doesn't feel like autopilot. So I leave it in altitude mode when I am using the autopilot nine times out of ten. And you'll see as we get closer, the jet is going to chill out and start flying at the heading that we gave it. Here we go. We're coming up on 030. And the jet is leveling itself out. And just to show you that, down here, we are at 030 with the heading bug. Or as close to it as we can. It's actually at like 31, it looks like. And we can see that right here on the HUD. The jet is actually flying at 3.1. The final caveat I'll give you with autopilot is you might be tempted to use autopilot to fly formation and or air to air refuel. Don't do it. You can't do it. If you're the flight lead, you can set the autopilot and then everybody can fly formation off of you a whole lot easier because you're not making distracting inputs. But if you are the wingman, it is too manual of a process to fly formation that the autopilot will not cannot won't not help you the other thing is the moment that we open the air to air refueling door which is back here the autopilot will disengage boom the autopilot has switched down to the off position and we have a flickish failure for the autopilot the autopilot does not work with the fuel door open so you cannot use it to air to air refuel as much as you might want to. Now you could end up in this situation where you have a flickish failure for the autopilot. Watch what happens if I put this back into altitude mode. I can't. I try to click it and nothing happens. My autopilot is in a state of failure. The way I can fix that is coming over to the flickish reset switch and I hit the flickish reset, that error clears itself and now I can come back and put the jet into altitude mode and i can go back to flying around with the autopilot there are many reasons that you can trigger an autopilot failure another one that's really easy to do is you're in autopilot and you all of a sudden a launch happens there's a sand coming at you and you grab the stick and you yank it and you turn you will force the autopilot to kick off so now the autopilot is off i am back in manual control and i have an autopilot failure how do I fix it? One more time. We come over to the flickest reset switch. We hit the flickest reset. Life is good. We can go back to using our autopilot. Hopefully you learned how to use the autopilot and it helps you become a better pilot and enjoy Falcon BMS a little bit more. If you like the video, you know what to do. Like the video. If you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.